All right, everybody, who's ready to learn how to be good at Datadog, which I am horrible at? If you are, then Tristan is going to give you a pitch that his open space is going to be in open space five during the next cycle of open spaces, okay? So if you like to talk, open space five, all right? Take it away, Tristan. Okay, thanks. Um, so hi, I'm Tristan Slominski uh, from Capability.io, and today I will talk to you about defining SLOs uh, with error budget burn, uh, burn rate alerting using Datadog. Um, now, um, these slides are available at Tristan LS, and I just tweeted them right now. Okay, now I'm ready. Um, uh, I, I take it as a given that you want SLOs and want to alert on them. So that's an assumption that I'm going to make. If that is not the case, I'm happy to discuss more in detail in the open space following the talk. Also, due to time constraints, uh, this introduction will provide a whirlwind overview um, for some context, but the slides are available for reference, and we also have time to talk more about it in open space, so hopefully this will be question generating. Uh, so first, an over I'm going to give an overview of alerting on SLOs according to the word of the Site Reliability Workbook, Chapter 5. When designing alerts, uh, these are the considerations taken into account to decide what is better. So precision, the proportion of events detected that were significant. So for example, an alert trigger triggered and it's a real event. Uh, recall the proportion of significant events detected. So an example would be a real event occurred and it triggered an alert. Uh, recall, excuse me, detection time, which is how long it takes to send notifications in various conditions. And the reset time, how long alerts fire after an issue is resolved. We will progress through six increasingly complicated methodologies to alert on, and this will be the answer. The multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts. That's what we get into it at the end. For our running example, uh, we will assume the SLO is 99.9% .9 requests succeed over 30 days. This SLO implicitly defines an error budget of 0.1%. Requests are allowed to fail over 30 days. So for the first method, target rate Target error rate is greater or equal to SLO threshold. We choose a small time window, for example, 10 minutes, and alert if the error rate at any time during the window exceeds the SLO threshold. Here is a list of pros and cons for reference. The highlight con is that you can receive up to 144 alerts per day, every day, and not act on it and still meet the SLO. So this is not the greatest way to alert. Building on the first method, we can increase the alert window to improve precision. By increasing the window size, you spend a higher amount of this error budget that we've mentioned before triggering an alert. To keep the rate of alerts manageable, in this example, you decide to be notified only in event if an event consumes 5% of your 30-day error budget. And in this case, in a so this would make a 36-hour window. Um, you can be out for 36 hours and only consume 5% of your error budget. Uh, while we improve our precision with that method, uh, that is when alert triggered. So precision, again, is alert triggered. It was a real event. Uh, the major con is very poor reset time. Uh, so in case of 100% outage, an alert will fire shortly after two minutes, and then it will continue to fire for the next 36 hours. Um, this figure here shows that while the, the, the error rate is the actual blue spike, and then the error rate alert, the green one, is what uh, is going to trigger an alert for 36 hours. Um, method three, which is incrementing alert duration. Most monitoring systems will allow you to add duration parameter to alert criteria so the alert won't fire unless the value remains above the threshold for some time. You may be tempted to use this parameter as a relatively inexpensive way to add longer windows. So instead of um, any time in the last minute, but, uh, excuse me, alert if error rate over previous one minute is greater than 0 .001, and make sure that continues to happen for an entire hour, and that's when we would alert. This method, however, has some significant cons, a poor recall and poor detection time, because the duration does not scale with the severity of the incident, 
So 100% outage alerts after one hour because you have to wait for an hour to make sure, you're waiting for an hour to make sure that threshold was, was crossed. Um, and it also takes you an hour to detect a 0.2% outage and a 100% outage. So the 100% outage would consume 140% of your 30-day error budget within that hour. So it doesn't alert fast enough. Um, another failure mode is uh, this figure shows how the average re error rate of a five-minute window of a service within a 10-minute duration before the alert fires. So you can have a bunch of alerts and then recover right before your window threshold is reached, and then have a bunch of uh, bunch of errors and then recover, and you will never fire an alert while consuming most of your a whole bunch of your error budget. So that's also another downside of this method. So to uh, improve upon the previous solutions, what we've been doing is kind of waiting for a long time to see whether we see a constant condition. We want to create an alert with a good detection time and high precision. So to this end, you can introduce a burn rate to reduce the size of the window while keeping the alert budget speed uh, spend constant. So burn rate is how fast relative to the service level objective the service consumes the error budget. So 5% of a 30-day error budget spent over one hour requires a burn rate of 36. So an example alert on burn rate would be alert if error rate of our previous one hour is greater than 36, and 0 0.001 is our, our error threshold, allowed errors. So this figure shows the relationship between burn rates, burn, burn rates and error budgets. Um, with an SLO of 99.9%, request succeeds over a time window of 30 Days, a constant 0.1% error rate will use exactly all of the error budget, and that's the burn rate of one. Um, burn rate of two means that 30 days worth of error budget will be consumed in 15 days. Burn rate of 10 means 30 days worth of error budget will be consumed in three days. Uh, there is a major con with the burn rate approach, and that is low recall. So for our alert on burn rate of 36, a burn rate of 35 will never fire. Um, and a burn rate of 30 35 will consume 30 days of error budget in 20 and a half hours. So if we, because for burn rates, we have to pick a burn rate. Anything that's below that does not trigger the alert. So your alerting logic can use multiple burn rates and time windows and fire alerts when burn rates surpass a specified threshold. This option retains the benefits of alerting on burn rates and ensures that you don't overlook lower but still significant error rates. It's also a good idea to set up ticket notifications um, for incidents that typically go unnoticed but can exhaust your error budget if left unchecked. For example, a 10% budget consumption in three days. And this rate of error catches significant events, but since the rate of budget consumption provides adequate time to address the event, you don't need to page someone. So you can start now picking which ones alert you immediately, which ones take some time. So from the book, this is the recommended time windows. So it's a low budget consumption, 2%. Time window is one hour. And that's the burn rate we're looking for. And we're going to page. Another one will page. And then the last one I just talked about, 10% over three days. We have plenty of time to react. There's no need to wake up anybody in the middle of the night. Let's just create a ticket or some other email or some kind of mechanism that somebody can address during work hours. Multiple burn rates allow you to adjust the alert to give appropriate priority based on how quickly you have to respond. If an issue will exhaust the error budget within hours or a few days. Um, sending an active notification is appropriate. Otherwise, a ticket base should be sufficient. We're almost to the most accurate alerting method. Uh, the major con of the multiple burn rate alerts is that that three-day alert window will still take a very long time to reset, right? So let's say we spent three days observing that we burned 10% of our error budget. Well, now we have to wait three days again, you know, three days rolling to make sure that that is no longer happening. So our last enhancement to the methodology is now we can enhance the multi-burn rate alerts to notify us only when we're s still actively burning through the budget thereby reducing number of false positives. So to do this, we need to add another parameter, a shorter time window to check if the error budget is still being consumed as we trigger the alert. So we have, we have a high burn rate, so over the previous one hour, and then over the last five minutes, let's make sure that whatever we observed over an hour is still true. And same thing with the other, like for three days, 
we have a three-day long um, alert, and we're like, okay, things are bad. Let's make sure that the last six hours, is whatever was happening in the next three days, is also happening in the last six hours. Because if it's not, we could have recovered from it already, and we don't need to alert anybody. Um, so a good guideline to make the short window is uh, one twelfth. So one twelfth, uh, the duration of the long window, and that's just a heuristic that you can change to to um, to however you like. Uh, this graph shows both the, both alerting thresholds. So after experiencing fifty, so blue again is the errors, the little square box, and after experiencing fifteen percent errors for ten minutes, um, you can see the short window average goes over the alerting threshold immediately, and then the long window average goes over the threshold after ten, five minutes at which point the alert will start firing. And then the short window average drops below the threshold five minutes after the error stops. So it has a nice recovery, a reset time, excuse me, at which point the alert stops firing. The long window average drops below the threshold 60 minutes after the error stop, but because we're doing an end of the two, our alert already reset. Um, and here, are the, this is the recommended long and short window durations for this type of alert. And again, short window is about 1 12th of the long window. So we arrived at capturing most of the pros. Um, the major con remaining is that now we have lots of parameters to specify. Um, so that's the price we pay for being able to tune the alerts for good precision and good recall. Um, so let's go over, so now with that overview out of the window, let's go over how to set up a multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts in Datadog, uh, which is not straightforward because Datadog has some limitations. Um, we don't, so, these burn rate alerts are all about looking at the last windows, and we don't have that sort of rolling aggregation in Datadog. Um, we only get a tumbling window and evaluation every X minutes in Datadog. So this means that while we're going to get kind of close to this multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts, our detection times can be up to twice as long as, the, as, as our large windows. So for example, we can't every five minutes, we can't look at the past hour. We can just look at our buckets. So that, that's, 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 that's quite unfortunate, um, but it's a limitation of Datadog. Um, and also, Datadog doesn't have histograms. So this makes working with latency SLOs more difficult than it should be. Uh, if this is a surprise, uh, let's talk more about doing open space. And by then, you'll also be convinced that Datadog doesn't have histograms. Um, and then, nevertheless, we can set up a Datadog monitor that provides us multi-window, multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts, as in Chapter Five of the SRE workbook. That estimates um, gets this is as close as we can get, I believe. So the most arcane portion of setting up a Datadog monitor for these burn rate alerts will be the monitor's query, and that's where we're going to focus on the rest of the presentation. Of what what do we do? What do we put in there? So this is the formula we're going to use. Um, the bad count is the count of bad requests in a roll-up period. In our example, we'll say these are the failed requests. Um, allowed error rate is your one minus the SLO. Um, so within our example, this is going to be 0 0.001. Total count is the count of good requests, good and bad requests in a roll-up period, basically our total count. Um, SLO period is the period for which our SLO is defined. So in our example, that was 30 days. And detection period is a parameter that determines what error budget burn rates alert we will detect. So for example, if detection period is 48 hours, then this alert will trigger when the burn rate would exhaust all of our error budget in 48 hours. Um, if detection period is three days, then this alert will trigger when the burn rate would exhaust all of our error budget within three days. So, and if detection period is one hour, then this alert will trigger when burn rate will exhaust all of error budget in one, in one hour. So uh, in my experience, I found it more reasonable to think about SLO period and how fast do I want to know about bad things as opposed to burn rate, which me, to me personally, I still have trouble. It's a unitless number, so it's, it's difficult to grasp meaning for me personally. So let's now turn this formula into an actual data doc query. For our example service, um, the metric counting bad requests is going to be called service.request.count. And failed requests are tagged with error true. So we have an error true tag. And we will take the sum of the roll up of 3,600 seconds. And so that 3,600 seconds being one hour bucket, we are measuring our bad count in. 
Uh, next, the allowed error rate is dictated by SLO is 0 0.001. Next, we're going to sum up the total count. Um, it is the sum of the same metric as before, rolled up and again over 3,600 seconds, our one hour bucket. But this time, we're going to count all requests. So this query does not have the error true count, and it, in, it includes all the requests that happened. And we'd enter, we then enter our SLO period for 30 days. And lastly, we're going to enter our desired detection period, which is 48 hours. And in days, that's going to be two days. So we now have an alert that will tally bad and total requests over a one hour bucket. And we will then see if that error ra ratio is greater than 15 in, the, in that past hour. And if that is the case, that means that the rate of errors over the last hour indicates we will run out of error budget in 48 hours or two days. Next, we, so once we, once we get that formula down and that's familiar, then everything else becomes much simpler. Because next we set up an alert that does the short window, right? One hour was our long window. This is our five minute window. And so the only change now we have is that in the roll up, it's over 300 seconds instead of 3,600 seconds, but everything else is the same. And this alert would trigger um, if in a five minute window, we hit the burn rate that would exhaust everything within two days. And so lastly, what we're going to do is set up actually a composite monitor. So Datadog has a mo composite monitor where you set up one monitor, you set up another one monitor, and then you get to decide, OK, if both of these are firing, now I want to actually get notified. Um, and so when both one hour window indicates we are going to run out of error budget within 48 hours and the last five minutes indicates that we're going to run out of error budget, um, then we're going to actually alert, and that's the criteria. So that's all I got for now. Um, the slides are available on Twitter for reference. And then I'm happy to answer questions and dive into details and slow everything down if we need to and go over everything again um, as much as necessary in the open session discussion. Thanks. Awesome. Remember, open space five, open space five during the next